this is Satish Patna, your QA trainer. So today's our class is uh, operators in Java. So after that, I'm going to explain the different types of uh, if conditions, like uh, if, if, else, nested, else, if. So like that, uh, today's our topics are both operators and uh, different types of uh, if conditions, okay? So today's our class is uh, only in English. So if you need a Telugu class, tomorrow again, I'll repeat the same class in Telugu. Okay, so if any of you miss my previous classes, I'll provide the links in the description. Please once uh, check the description for the previous classes. Okay, so now coming to the today's session. See, what are the different operators in the Java? So in Java, we have uh, operators like uh, arithmetic operator, relational operator, logical operator, concatenation operator, and assignment operator. See, what are the arithmetic operators? Arithmetic operators means like a plus, minus, so multiplication and a division plus plus minus minus. So what is the meaning of plus plus? Plus plus stands for incrementation with one. Incrementation with one. Minus minus stands for decrementation with one. Plus plus means incrementation with one. Minus minus means decrementation with one. For example, if you write uh, x plus plus, what is the meaning of x plus plus? It means x equal to x plus 1, x equal to x plus 1. So what is the meaning of x minus minus? My x minus minus means x equal to x minus 1. Anyway, from today onwards, in daily our programming, we are going to use all these operators. Don't worry. So slowly you can understand all these things uh, day by day. Okay, so plus plus means incrementation with one, minus minus means a decrementation with one. So I think you know about uh, addition, subtraction, multiplication, division. I think everybody know all these things. And uh, now coming to the relational relational operators. Equal to is for comparison, whether the two values are equal or not. It is a not equal to, the greater than, less than, greater than or equal to, less than or I think uh, from childhood onwards in your mathematics, uh, you can see this greater than, less than, all these operators. So for example, for just your understanding purpose. So if I write like uh, five is greater than two, now is it right or wrong? Five is greater than two. Yes, the five is greater value than two. Yes, it is true. It is true. Say so if I write like uh, five is greater than five, is it right or wrong? 5 is greater than 5? No, it is wrong. It is wrong. So if I write like a 5 is greater than or equal to 5, 5 is greater than or equal to. Either greater or equal to 5. Yes, it is true. Okay. In the same way, coming to the le less than operator. So for example, if I write uh, uh, 2 is less than 7. Yes. 2 is less than 7. It is right. It is a true. So if I write like uh, uh, 7 is less than 2, no, it is wrong. 7 is not a less than 2. It is wrong. So if I write like uh, 2 is less than 2, no, it is also wrong. No, 2 is less than 2 is a wrong. 2 is less than or equal to 2. 2 is less than or equal to 2. Yes, this is true. So like this, so we are going to use these operators less than, greater than, less than or equal to, greater than or equal to. We are going to see all these operators in our daily programming from today onwards. Okay. So coming to the logical operators. So the logical operators are and or not. And means the both conditions should satisfy. For example, in between a two conditions, if you write and, so that means the both condition should satisfy. R means any one condition should satisfy. R means any one condition should satisfy. Not means no condition should satisfy. Not means no condition should satisfy. For example, uh, you want to learn manual testing and automation testing. What is the meaning of that? You want to learn manual testing and automation testing and means the both you want to learn the both things and means the both conditions should satisfy 
R means any one condition should satisfy. For example, you want to learn manual testing or automation testing. What is the meaning of that? You want to learn any one R. So not means no condition should satisfy like that. And means the both conditions should satisfy. R means any one condition should satisfy. Not means no condition should satisfy. Now coming to the concatenation operator. So here the plus is called as a concatenation operator. It is for concatenating two different data types. Concatenating two different data types. And it is for concatenating two strings also. Concatenating two strings also. I'll show the small example for this. Say Absha here, I'm writing some class name. You can take any class name your wish. Inside the class, I'm writing a main method. Already you are familiar with this uh, main method, public static void main. It is a main method opening bracket, main method closing bracket. Here I'm writing some print commands like uh, system.out.println. So you can observe here, there is one string. Ramesh is a string. It is in double quotations, okay? Five is a numeric. Five is a numeric. Both are two different data types. Both are two different data types. So here the Ramesh is a string. Five is a numeric. So if you want to concatenate the numeric value with a string value, if you want to concatenate the numeric value with a string value, in between that, you need to use a concatenation operator, the plus. Plus is for concatenating a string with a numeric, or you can concatenate a numeric with string, okay, string with a numeric or a numeric with a string, or you can concatenate the two strings. Here the Ramesh is a string, Kumar is a string. In between the two strings for concatenation, you need to write the plus. But here one thing, plus is act as a concatenation operator as well as the plus is also act as a arithmetic operator. Say observe that today's session, just if I scroll it up, you can see the first operator is arithmetic operator. So plus is a arithmetic operator, it is for addition. Plus is for addition. And the plus is act as a concatenation operator also. But when it is act as a concatenation operator, the when it is act as a arithmetic operator. The concatenation means, say, if you write numeric with string or string with numeric or both sides, if you have a strings, then it act as a concatenation operator. Both sides, if you have a numeric values, for the plus, both sides, if you have a numeric values, then it act as a arithmetic operator. Automatically, the plus act as a arithmetic operator. Right, Emma? So both sides, if you have a numeric value, it act as a arithmetic operator. So one side uh, uh, numeric and one side string, or both sides, if you have a strings, then it act as a concatenation operator. So you can see the output already I executed this program for you. Once again, I'm executing the program. So in the console, you can see the output. So Ramesh and five, it is concatenating, concatenating the both things, four and Ramesh, Ramesh and Kumar. Abja, the last one, four plus five, nine. Okay. And one more thing, I want to maintain some gap between the Ramesh and five. If you want to maintain the gap between the Ramesh and five, then what you can do within the double quotation, within the double quotation, just give a space. Here, just you need to give a space. And run it and observe the output. Then now you can see the space here. Okay, here in the second uh, print command, so I, I need a space between this uh, four and uh, Ramesh. So here within the double quotation, in the beginning just I maintained some space. Again, run the program. So you can see four space Ramesh. The in between the Ramesh and Kumar, I want to maintain a space. So here you can maintain a space or here you can maintain a space, your wish. I execute it. Now you can see the Ramesh and Kumar. Two spaces, one space here and one space is here. And uh, here, uh, both sides, if you have a numeric value, then plus is act as an arithmetic operator. And one side, uh, if you have a string value, then it act as a concatenation operator. Anyway, the plus is act as an arithmetic operator and the plus is act as a concatenation operator. Now coming to the assignment operator. Equal to is called as a assignment operator. So it is for assigning some value into variable. It is for assigning some value into variable. So what is the meaning of x equal to 5? My x equal to 5 means 
we are storing the 5 into x. We are storing the 5 into x. So it is used to, equal to is used to assigning the value of 5, assigning the value of 5 into x, into x. And we have some uh, shortcut forms. So anyway, maybe in the next classes, we are going to use the shortcuts also, plus equal to, minus equal to, star equal to. See, anywhere if you write like this, x plus equal to 5, for example, what is the meaning of x plus equal to 5? It means x equal to x plus 5, x minus equal to 5, it means x equal to x minus 5, x star equal to 5, it means x equal to x star. So anyway, within one or two days, we are going to use this shortcut forms in our program. Okay, ma? See, now coming to the next topic, if condition. If condition. I'll show a small example for if condition. See, in our real life also, in general, we are using a if, like uh, when you are talking with your friend or when you are talking with somebody. So we are talking like, uh, if you work hard, you will get success. Ma? In generally, what we are talking, if you work hard, you will get success. That means, really, if you are working hard, then only the next thing will be success. What is the next thing? Uh, you will get a good success in your life, like that. That means, if the condition pass, then the next statement will be executed. If the condition pass, the next statement will be executed. That means, you will enter into the if block. If the condition fail, the next statement will not execute. You will not go to the next statement. So here also same, you can go with any program name, I mean you can go with any class name, your wish. So just I'm writing if example, if example, already you know the naming convention, it is beginning with uppercase and every internal word is beginning with uppercase, write a main method, now inside the main method just I'm writing a variable int x equal to 0, int x equal to 0, always the data type must be in lowercase, so already you know that, okay ma? So here, if x is less than 20, x is less than 20, then the condition will pass, you will enter into the if block. It is a if block opening, it is if block closing. See, inside the if block, you can write any number of statements. Now, inside this, you can write any number of statements. Presently, for today, just I'm writing a single statement. So, in future, we can write any number of statements here. See, just observe this condition. Is it pass or fail? My x equal to 10. x equal to 10 and check it out. The x is less than 20. That means that 10 is less than 20. A 10 is less than 20 means, is it right or wrong? Yes, it is a right. Okay, ma? So, 10 value is less than 20. Yes, this is right. The 10 is, 10 value is less than 20. So, the condition is passed you will enter inside the block. You will enter inside the block. Inside the if block, whatever the statements you written, all the statements will be executing. Presently, I'm writing only single statement. So that particular single statement is executed. You can see the output here in the console. Okay, for example, here I'm writing the x value is 30. I'm writing the x value is 30. And now the condition is pass or fail. Now, observe here, 30 is less than, see, for your understanding purpose, here I'm writing 30 is less than 20. Now, 30 less than 20 means, is it right or wrong? Yes, obviously, it is wrong. 30 is not a less than 20. So, the condition fail. 30 less than 20 means the condition will be failure. If the condition fail, it will not enter into the if block. It will not enter into the if block, so if I run the program, you can't see any output here. You can't see any output. So because if the condition pass, then only you will enter into the block, else you will not enter into the block. Presently, there is no output here. And one more thing, so when you are writing the condition, it must be in lowercase. It must be in lowercase. And don't give a semicolon at the end of this condition. Don't give the semicolon at the end of this condition. Okay. Fine. Again, I'm giving the uh, x value equal to 10. Yes, now it is right. The 10 is less than 20. It is correct. Now it executes the uh, block. Inside the block, 
how many statements and whatever the statements are written, all the statements will be executing. It is about the if condition. So what about if else? If else. Now, if else means if the condition pass, if the condition pass, it will enter into the if block. If the condition fail, if the condition fail, it will go to the else block. It will go to the else block. See, here inside the if block, you can write any number of statements. Inside the else block, you can write any number of statements. Presently, observe the program. Take some new class here, your wish. Your class, class name can be anything. Write a main method, some x equal to 30. Now the condition is pass or fail. 30 is less than 20. 30 is less than 20 means, is it a right or wrong? 30 is less than 20 means, yes, it is wrong. 100% it is wrong. See, when it is wrong, when it is wrong, it will go to the else part. It will go to the else part. It will not execute the if block, it will execute the else block. So inside the else block, whatever the statements we are writing, so those statements will be printed here. Just here I'm writing only else. For example, again, I'm writing some x equal to 10. If I write some x equal to 10, now the condition is pass. The condition is pass. 10 is less than 20. It will go to the if block. Now it will not execute the else block. It will not execute the else block. Only the if block is executed. Only the if block is executed. See, if the condition is failure, if the condition is failure, then only it will execute the else block. Now, when you are writing the else, it is also in lowercase only. Don't write it in uppercase, it will not work. Okay, fine. It is about uh, if else, if else. Now, previously we discussed the if. This is an example for if else. Now, coming to the next topic, else if. The next topic is else if. Now, what is this else if? Okay, I'll show the example. See, you can take any class name, your wish. For example, I'm writing like a else if example, so and so, your wish. Write a main method. Inside a main method, just I'm taking a variable. A variable means it is not only x, y, z like that. You can take any uh, meaningful name for the variables. For example, I'm writing the variable is marks. My variable is marks. What is the data type? The data type is integer. And whatever the marks I entered here, whatever the marks I entered here, based on that marks, it should display whether is it a first class or second class or third class or failure like that. Like a grade, or you can go with a grade A, grade B, grade C, like that, grade D, your wish. See, here, what is the first condition? The first condition is I'm checking like if the marks are greater than or equal to 60, greater than or equal to 60, then it will go with the first block. So for example, assume like here I'm writing the marks equal to 70. Initially, I'm giving the marks equal to 70. But now the condition is pass or fail. Yes, the 70 is greater than or equal to 60. It is right. So then it will enter into the first block, I mean the if block. And what it will print? It will print it is a first class. Say observe the output. The output is first class, right? So is it goes to the else part? No, it will not go to the else. If the condition is failure, if the condition is failure, then only it will go to the else. Presently the condition is pass. So it will not go to the else. It will not go to the remaining ifs. Why? Because the remaining ifs are a part of the else. The remaining ifs are a part of else. So presently it will not go to the else part. Only the if part is executing and it is pass. It will print like first class. For example, instead of 70, I'll make it as a 60. I'll make it as a 60. Now check it out. Is it right or wrong? Now 60 is greater than or equal to 60. For your understanding purpose, here I'm writing 60 is greater than or equal to 60. Is it right or wrong? Yes, it is right. Why? Because here we have equal to. If you don't have this equal to, then it is wrong. But we have a equal to. Yes, the 60 is greater than or equal to 60. It is right. Again, it will print first class. 
again it is printing first class so if the marks are 60 or more than 60 it will be first class fine for example i am giving the marks as a 50 marks the marks as a 50 marks but now the condition is pass or fail is that 50 is greater than or equal to 60 no it is wrong it is wrong it will go to the else inside the else inside the else we have one more if condition the second if condition now, but when you will go to the second if condition if the first if is failure if the first if is failure then only you will go to the second if why because the second if is a part of the else second if is a part of the else but now the condition is pass or fail check it out 50 is greater than or equal to 45 yes the 50 is greater than 45 it is right so it will print this statement second class and it will not go to the else part but because here the condition is pass it will not go to the remaining else so simply it will print like it is a second class second class if i give a 50 marks yes the second class is printed okay ma for example i am giving uh, the marks are 40 now check it out the first condition is pass or fail 40 is greater than 60 no wrong now 40 is uh, greater than 45 no wrong it will go to the else in this else again we have one more if the third if condition if the second if is also failure then it will go to the third if and now the 40 is greater than 35 yes the 40 is greater than or equal to 35 it will enter into this if and it will print like a third class it's print like third class right see now finally i want to give like a 30 marks 30 marks means option here uh, the 30 is uh, greater than 60 no wrong it will go to the else and here it will check the 30 is greater than 45 no wrong so it will go to this else it will check the third condition the 30 is greater than 35 no more. 30 is not a greater than 35 finally it will go to the else so like this you can write any number of conditions your wish finally go with the else uh, if all the conditions fail you, finally it will go with else. So finally it will print like a failure. Failure. Okay. And when you are writing the else if program, when you are writing else if program, there must be a space. There must be a space between the else and if. There must be a space in between else and if. Don't forget that. And it must be in lowercase only. It must be in lowercase only and you should not give a semicolons you should not give a semicolons at the ending of the particular if okay and uh, it is about else if it is about else if so today we discussed uh, beginning we discussed operators after that if example next time if else if else next else if else if okay now finally coming to the nested if now for today the last topic is nested if what is the nested if simply nested if means if within the if what is the meaning of a nested if if within the if is called as a nested if say observe this example you can write any class name your wish write a main method i'm taking two variables like int x equal to some 25, int y equal to some 5, like that. And observe the condition. Is that condition pass or fail? x is less than 30. That means the 25 is less than 30. 25 is less than 30. Is it right? Yes, the 25 is less than 30. You can check here. See, 25 is less than 30. Yes, some other 25 is a less value than 30 it is pass say when it is pass when it is pass it will enter inside the if it will enter inside this if block inside this if block we have one more if the second if but when you will go to the second if when you will go to the second if if the first if is pass if the first if is pass then only you can go to the second if then only you can go to the second if. say the second if is pass or fail. Now presently, the y value is a 5. 
y value is a 5, 5 is less than 10. Y is less than 10 means the 5 is less than 10. Yes or no? It is right. 5 is less than 10. Yes, it is right. Then it will enter inside whatever the statement inside that particular statement will be executed. And nested if means if within the if, if within the if is called as a nested if, in this nested if concept, if the first if is pass, if the first if is pass, then only you can go to the second if. If the first if is pass, then only you can go to the second if. Why? Because the second if is a part of the first if. So if the first if is pass, then only you can go to the second if. Assume like if the first if is failure, if the first if is failure, you can't go with a second if. You can't go with a second if. So this concept is called as a nested if. Nested if. Okay, ma? See, uh, for today, I'm closing here. Uh, the same class tomorrow, again, I'll repeat it in the Telugu. And uh, please uh, like the video uh, and uh, share it with your friends. If any of your friends need it, please uh, share it with your friends. And please subscribe my channel. And if anyone needs the one-to-one -one online training class, please contact me in the mail ID. So in the description, I provided my mail ID. So if you need, uh, just uh, you can contact to my mail ID. Okay. So see you on tomorrow with the same class in Telugu. Thank you so much.